श्रुति स्मृति पुराण आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादराजन सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्याप्तेहाय दक्षिणाूर्त नम ओ सहना सहनौ भुन सह वीर वह तेजस्वी नमस्तुमा वह ुभ्यो नम हरि ओस्टर्डे बी ए स्टार्टअप सिंहावलोकन इट मीन प्रॉपर रिविजन विच विल बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो इज बीन डिस्क्राइब एस्टर्डे Let us begin the questions. Okay. Now, the first question: The Upanishad is called Isha Vasya Upanishad. What is the reason? It begins the Upanishad begins with Idam Sarvam Isha Vasya, so it is called Isha Vasya Upanishad. Okay. Good. The Upanishad. begins with the word isha therefore it is known as isha vasyam good then what is the shanti mantra for this upanishad purna madam purna madam purna madam purna madam okay is there any specific name for this mantra शांति मंत्र शांति मंत्र बट दिस मंत्र इज कॉल्ड लय मंत्र इज देर एनी स्पेसिफिकेशन और सिंबल विच सिंबलाइज इट इज लय मंत्र डू यू फाइंड एनी डिफरेंस इन दिस मंत्र Hari Om, Hari Om, Swami. Is the only one that the Shanti, Shanti, Shanti is different. Mm-hmm. So, how many of you are aware? I have told this. Only with this mantra, the last three words among this Dasha Shanti mantras, only this mantra will have that Sha becomes Anudata letter. With all other mantras. T becomes udata letter. T first two T. Shan te shan te shan te he. The last T becomes udata. Two anudata. But here only all sha. Shan te shan te shan te he. Only sha becomes anudata. Anudata means with a low pitch voice. Shan. Therefore, it is known as Laya mantra. Why three times a shanti is recited? Swamiji, this for Adhyatma. 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 Ad शांति इन ऑर्डर टू नेगेट इन ऑर्डर टू रिमूव दुख तापम मीन दुख सारो विच कम्स थ्रू थ्री वेज नाउ आध्यात्मिक मीन वर्ड कॉम्प्लेक्स My own. So, so your 
from March 20th. From March 20th. Ha. What is the original letter? From inside of you. Adi. Tapam. The tapam or the dukham. Stacking. Tapam. Oh, tapam. Here, adhyatmikam. The word adhyatmikam doesn't mean dukham. Okay. You should remember. Adhyatmik means it says that it is personal. It is self-related. Adhyatmika means self-related. Okay. Actually, the word Adhyatmika, this word refers to spiritual lifestyle. That's it. Adhyatmika means a spiritual lifestyle. Spiritual means which is related to the self. Adhyatmika. You might have heard Adhyatmika Ramayana. So if you misunderstand, then you will interpret uh, Adhyatmikam Ramayanam means uh, Tapatraya Ramayana. This is self-related sword Ramayana. Of course, Ramayana, it, it talks about uh, sad, you know, it talks about Dukkha of Rama and Rasita. But Adhyatmikam means, uh, it can be translated spirituality. Adhyatmikam word is spirituality. Why it is called spirituality? It is self-related. Atmikam. Atmikam means self-related. Adhyatmikam means which is the preference. But here, Adhyatmika Tapaha. The Tapa is to be understood. Okay. Tapa means Dukkham. The sorrows, the uh, good or bad experiences. Shastra always says that the happiness which we consider as happiness is also is nothing but a kind of sorrow. Because it makes me kind of slave. It makes me to depend on something. Because objective anandas. They give objective anandas. Which is not required for us because our Swarupa itself is ananda. It's a message. Okay. Therefore, uh, Adhyatmika means the Dukkhas which is caused through or due to my own body, mind and sense complex. With my own decision, my own, see, we, we suffer a lot through our own decisions, our own misconclusions, our own uh, wrongdoing. Okay, Adi Bhautikam. What is it? Bhautikam means, you all know that, Bhautikam means related to the world. Bhutam word is called in Tadhita Bhautikam. Like Dasharati becomes Dasharati. Bhuta becomes Bhau. Bhu becomes Bhau. Bhautikam means it's which, that which is related to the world, universe. That's it. Bhautikam. Adi Bhautikam means what? The Dukkhas which is caused by the object and the people around. The object and people around. Adi Bhautikam. But Bhautikam means what? Related to the world. Materials. Bhautikam is a positive word. Bhautika, Adi Bhautika Tapam. Adi Bhautika Tapam also is due to what? Our own karma phalas. Now, our own karma phala is divided into three ways. That should not be forgotten. My karma phala gives me happy and sorrow through my body, mind, and sense complex. And uh, through the people who live around, through the object which are available in this world. Now, what I am categorizing is. I am categorizing my karma phala into three portions so that I can deal with it, I can work on it, I can respond it, not becoming victim to react. So, dukkhas which is coming through my body, mind and sense complex is also is due to my karma phala. Dukkha which comes from the people around, the object around is also due to my own karma phala. I take the charge, I become responsible for the things which are happening in me, towards me, in me, from me, towards me. So this uh, conclusion or this understanding will help me to work on it, work on it, okay. 
I cannot control my body. I cannot control this entire universe because I cannot stop my blood circulation, my heartbeat, my things. I cannot stop. I cannot stop even the emotions which now and then is originated. The emotions are generated. I cannot stop the emotions because it has got its own system. But those emotions, whether it is anger or any emotion, Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, Matsarya, all of them are nothing but karma plus. Emotion towards me, I have emotion towards somebody, all of them are due to my own karma plus. Okay, then what is Adi Devika? Natural disasters. Beyond our cap capacity, Swamiji. They are caused beyond our control. Okay, actually the destructions are pain which is caused by the natural disaster which is unexpected and the reason cannot be found. And which is beyond our control too. Hariyam Swamiji, can I ask a small doubt, Swamiji, here? Yes. yes. Uh, what, what is the, then they say, no, Swamiji, these uh, could be the, due to the cause of collective karma. Collective, is there something like that, Swamiji? Collective karma phala. That's what I am about to. First, we categorized, categorized Adhyatmikam, Adhibhautikam. It's very easy to understand because we, uh, we are... Um, uh, having more close proximity with our own body mind sense complex and also we are uh, connected with the people okay the people around us uh, at least uh, we are able to understand but this natural disaster it cannot be predicted then is it the karma pula of an individual or is it a karma pula of a collective people This is nothing but individual karma pala, but which becomes similar to a group of people. That's what we call it collective karma pala. But individuality doesn't go. Though tsunami happened, all people didn't, uh, uh, didn't lose their life. Some of them lost their house, some of means a home. Uh, some of them, they lost their job. Some of them, they lost uh, limbs. Therefore, individual karma pala, but collectively it happens. It is Adi Daivikam. Why it is called Adi Daivikam? Devad Bhavam Daivikam. It's a kind of positive uh, approach. Daivikam means Ishwara. So, Ishwara, when say Ishwara Bhavam, Aishwaram. See, Ishwara Bhavam, Aishwaram. Like Devad Bhavam, Daivikam. We can say that the karma pala dhata is Ishwara. Though I have my own karma pala, the body is not manufactured by me. The world is not manufactured by me. It has given, that duty is given to Ishwara. Ishwara means you don't think that Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara, all of them together. There is a power which creates. That power creates that power is the cause of this Adi Dai we come to, but in collective way. How to respond it? Only one way. We have to work with our buddhi, means we should have uh, uh, security measures as much as possible, but we have to depend on what? Rituals. The rituals means every rituals they are connected with Pancha Bahutika. For example, Last year, uh, we had a havan, not last year, three months before. It was a rainy season here, three months or two months before. We were supposed to begin the havan, it started drizzling. I could see that it is going to be a, with a heavy rain. I called that Brahmana. I asked him to bring Akshata. I did some kind of japa. I asked him to uh, throw all direction. Ashtadik. Ashtadik means so Ishanya, Indra, Agni, Yama, Naruti, Varuna, Vayu, and Soma, 
Wood her another. He went and uh, he just dropped all those things. Within 10 minutes, the drizzle stopped. It became sunny day, no rain was there. After Havan Raj came and he did Sastanga Namaskara because he could see that he set tears in eye. Nobody knows. So all other Brahmanas were, he said, Brahmanas are always concentrated with their mantra. And he said, How? How I didn't do anything. I just had the prayer. That's it. Towards this Dik Devatas, the ritual will change. The ritual will change. They have this, that power, energy. But all heart cannot read the language, connect the language. There are souls. When you respect the rituals, you respect this Pancha Bahutas, they will start responding. They will start responding. Always when we go for uh, this Yatra, what is that pilgrim, uh, Brahmagiri? Doesn't matter how heavily it was raining. When we begin, rain stops. We begin with Sankalpa, we begin with Japa, rain stops. After 3 o'clock, because when we are about to end, drizzling begin. As though it's refreshing. This time also it happened. People who came with me, they were, always they wonder. <coughs> These five elements respond. They respond for puja and purpose. Still now, Kumbhagashyakam, when it happens, you could see the eagles, they take around. What is the connection? We don't invite them, but they, they come. Right. Uh, I am Swamiji. I am. Uh, I am seeing one connection here. For example, the natural disasters, what happened in Kedarnath? We had been to Kedarnath, and the natural disaster, what happened two days back in Sikkim, we were in Lachan, Lachum and all those places. Uh -huh. So the connection is, cloudburst is a natural uh, phenomena. Yes. But uh, a place like Kedarnath or Lachan, since we have been there, Kedarnath is fully surrounded by mountains, glaciers, mountains, high mountains. We call it Kun. It's like an armchair. So the, the river, uh, uh, what is that river? The Mandakini. Mandakini. Yes, yes, Mandakini comes from there. Mandakini is the only outlet and where a city or a town should not be constructed at all because uh, the same thing with the Lachan also. So there should not be a village there because it is bound for uh, flood and bound for avalanches. So natural disaster, you can't call it natural disaster. It's a cloud burst, it's a natural phenomena. But uh, the collective uh, mistake or collective karma is building a dam or building something there where it is bound to be washed away. And people, 22 army jawans uh, being washed away in uh, Lachung and uh, hundreds of people dying in uh, Kedarnath is a collective, it's, a, it's their individual karma. But uh, the collective karma is building a dam or building a township there. And then natural disaster is... Uh, it's a natural Panjabhutas, uh, that's how they behave, that's how there is a cloud burst. Because cloud burst has been happening there, it is not a new phenomena. But there is a connection, nature and uh, collective uh, mistake or collective karma and few individuals dying, not everybody, had, even the people who built those towns or dams, they didn't die, but innocent people have died. It is their individual karma, I don't know, that is how it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, it's correct, you are correct, because we were there, I was there. The two days before the disaster, we were in Kedarnath. Do you remember or not? We were in Kedarnath. I was with Mumbai people alone. Two days ago, we were in Kedarnath. We, as we reached to Badrinath on the day, so that, uh, uh, that uh, what is that, the cloud burst had happened. Badal put gayata. The next day I could see Ganga was flowing. Then all the news came. All the news came. I was in Rishikesh alone at that time. Okay. Now we will come to the next question. In the first and second mantra, how many subjects have been introduced? Yes. 
Hariyam Swamiji. Yes. Three subjects have been introduced. First is, first is supreme knowledge. Mm -hmm. In second line, it is nivrutti marga. Mm -hmm. And in second verse, it is uh, pravrutti marga. Shreyas and prayas. Okay, Shreyas and prayas. So now, the first, can you, can anyone else, uh, anyone, Explain simply what is the first subject? Yes. It is the first mantra describes Jagat. World. First mantra is describing Jagat? No, first line of first mantra, which is the first topic. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Swamiji. Uh, Ishwara, everything, uh, um, everything is Ishwara. We're perceiving uh, everything as Ishwara as part of the Brahmatya, Swamiji. Okay. Everything is part of Brahmavidya. Okay, good. So, someone else? Um, Hari Om. Um, yes, so the first line, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarvam, talks about um, covering everything with the vritti of Ishwara. So, in the end, it is talking about the process of equating yourself with Ishwara. That is the Brahmatma Aikyam. Good. You, you, you said the, uh, the first stage of it. And the, this is the next stage. The next stage is what? Everything is nothing but Ishura is the understanding. But practically, Achadaniyam, Isha Vasyam. Vasyam means what? Achadaniyam. Achadani means to cover. To cover means, is it with a budget or blanket or what? No. It's with Vritti. Vritti. We have to cover uh, this with Vritti. Okay. Good. The verse begins with a simple proclamation that the world is pervaded by Ishwara. The world exists as what is pursued by an individual. This is because the world is experienced by individual purely on his own creation and account of his one's own karma phala. We are in reality live in this world in true isolation which because we experience during our sleep the true consciousness. This is what we need to understand that our deep sleep is when we really experience it. However, when we experience the dream state, we once again experience the virtual world and is also a result of the memories carried with you. Thus, in all the three states, we experience aham, idam, iti state of ourselves. So, it ultimately drives the point that the concept of Ishwara and us is drawn in the first verse. So, Aikya Bhavam, as what uh, she said, is what is been explained here. Then there is, of course, much more detailing is there, which you had explained to us, so many. Okay. Now, the process which we are undergoing is called what? Hariyam Nididhyasanam Swamiji. Mananam. Uh, it's, it's not Nididhyasanam. Mananam. Mananam. Sorry. Somebody, uh, can anyone explain what is Mananam? Contemplation Swamiji. Which is what, what you read, what you understand, you contemplate on it. Okay. Somebody else? To get our doubts clear. Doubt clearance, then? Relate to our experiences with what we have understood with the. To relate to our experiences and with what we are learning from Vedanta, to try to uh, see how it is, our own experiences and what is taught by Vedanta. Okay. Somebody else? To analyze what we listen. Realize what we listen. Okay. What we heard. Okay.
the three things, right? It is Shravanam, Mananam, and Nidityatam. So, Shravanam, we start with the listening. Okay. And then move to contemplation. Contemplation. Yes. Also in this process to clear our doubt, doubts with Guru. We get cleared with our doubts. Okay. Simply we can say that uh, digestion. Digestive assimilation. knowledge. Assimilation. Assimilation. That's the proper word. Very good word. Assimilation. <coughs> the proper. Banana means assimilating the knowledge which we received in the form of indirect Indirect knowledge will be converted into direct knowledge. Assimilation to convert indirect to direct. Apnana. In Hindi we call it apnana. Okay. So this process is a very important process. So manana means uh, just we can say that this is a uh, doubt clearance. Yes. That is with another other education also. But we cannot call them Mananam. Mananam is not a repetition. Mananam is not mere clarifications of the doubt. Mananam is not rewinding or uh, uh, what is that, uh, recollecting the things. Mananam is a kind of assimilation that helps us to convert indirect knowledge to the direct knowledge. Okay. Good. Now my question, if entire universe is nothing but Ishwara, why we are not able to understand why we were born? Means we were born. Ariya, Swamiji. Ariya. Yeah, because of our karma phala. Because of our karma phala. Somebody else? Ariya, Swamiji. Maya yeah. is because of our buddhi, which is a product of karma <laughs> Okay, because our, our has a which is the product, product of karma pula. Then Maya, due to Maya. Avidya. Avidya. We are born out of Avidya. That's the we are reason. Born out of Avidya. Okay. Then, see now, whatever you heard, you are able to connect with that. Now we are connecting with the reason and the theory which has been told in the Vedanta. Somebody told Maya. Maya, yes, Maya is connected, but Maya is not directly connected. Maya is the Upadhi of Ishwara, which we have been learning for a long time. We are connected with Avidya. This is a too technical reason. But general, in general, we understand it's due to my karma. Yes. Every day we wake up due to our karma. We become awaken is due to karma pull. Like that, when we are born, we are born to experience our karma pull. This is a normal understanding. Normal understanding means the brain and our buddhi should reason it. Why this is happening? Immediately, buddhi will bring a logical reason. Like that, the karma pull is the proper answer. But if you are a Vedanti, if you are a Vedanti, what causes for karma phala is karma. The What is the cause for karma is the desire. Why the desire is arriving? Due to the ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance means uh, not knowing certain things. Ignorance of uh, uh, operating flight, ignorance of... Uh, the swimming, ignorance of cooking will cause this. No. The birth only will be caused by the self-ignorance. Now that self-ignorance is due to what? We call it avidya. That's the Vedantic perspective answer. The answer with Vedantic perspective. Avidya is the reason. We are born with avidya. Now, this is uh, not only this birth, every birth, every birth. Now, can we say how many births that we have undergone? Can we count? No, Swamiji. No, not possible. No. Now, my uh, question is, because I think in from all the way, 
When we learnt avidya is the reason, okay, do you believe that we might have born, we might have heard previous birth, do we believe or do you uh, doubt in it? We believe. We believe. You believe. You believe, you accept also. Is it because of Vedanta or is it because of your personal uh, understanding before Vedanta? Are you Swamiji? Yeah. Yes, it is only due to the learning from you, Guru, the perspective has changed. Because there were many religion changes. One popular religion doesn't believe in a rebirth. Then the entire life changes. You cannot reason anyone. Why you got these parents? Why you are born here? It's very important. It's very, very important. And thereafter, do you believe thereafter we are going to have another birth? We believe. We believe. That's also dependent on what? Our Shastra. Now we are able to understand we are in between because it has not begun now. Now my question is, how many avidyas that we are endowed with? Is it one avidya, one medium, or is there any, every birth, are we going to have different, different avidya? Is it like that? No. Are you familiar? Uh, the avidya is a part and parcel of the nature. So every time, every birth, we will be born with the avidya. However, if in my past births, I have had similar gurus in my life, my every birth, my avidya will keep on reducing in the sense, my realization will start becoming more and more better. So avidya okay. will remain, but till you reach the final destination, mm -hmm. the uh, improvement will keep happening. Okay. So what I am today is because of my past. Because there are so many around us who were given an opportunity to uh, learn, understand okay. the Shastras, they simply dropped out. They did not continue, for example, or they did not join in the first place. But we continued, we are here with you. So that is the difference. My avidya was there, but today the avidya has lessened. If I was carrying 100, 100 points of avidya, today probably I am lived with 80 points of avidya. 20 points are at least gone. I know where we are moving into. This is what my understanding is from me. Okay. So somebody else? Yes, uh, Guruji. Like what he said, mm -hmm. I always uh, believe that there is a rebirth. Because my uh, thinking was, uh, what do you call yourself I? This question was always there. What is I? Is it my eye? Or is it my nose? Or is it my brain? Is it my heart? What is I? Or it is every, you can call your brain is also I only, me, that is me. Even your blood cell, every small blood cell is also I only, it's part of me. But all these parts of uh, me is made of certain carbon atoms, which is common. So that is the Paramatma. The Paramatma is uh, there in you, in me, it's all basically carbon atom, but we are all in different forms of carbon atoms. and. This carbon atoms, uh, once we die, it will disperse and again it will reform into a different uh, uh, body. So, that uh, misunderstanding of I or me, uh, I don't know what is me. Is it the full body or is it uh, the bone or is it uh, every cell in my body is I? It, it is I. Everything inside me is I. So, the same I is there in you also because we are all made of the same common material. So, this clarified by learning from you, it confirmed that uh, this avidya of me, what is me? Everything inside me is me, but collectively we call it uh, a personality as Ramanan. But Ramanan is made of the same material as you. It is the same material made, every creature if it uh, lives in this universe, it's all made of the same thing only. So, that is the Paramatma and uh, the me inside me, the every atom is also Paramatma. It pervades everywhere. So that uh, rebirth, reassembling of these atoms into different, different forms is a rebirth. So this uh, study of Vedanta to you, it confirms. Yeah, it confirms. 
Hariyam Swamiji. Yes, Hariyam. We, we keep evolving in each and every birth due to Guru Upadesha and everything. Okay, good. <laughs> is there anyone? Hariyam Swamiji. Hariyam. Uh, Avidya is the Upadhi for the Jeevas. Yes. But um, this Upadhi is the, the, the Avidya co covers the, the real nature, no? Yes. But the Upadhi changes between, because all of us, we have different Upadhis. So the same Avidya, but in different uh, manifestation. So mm -hmm. some Upadhis reflect the, the consciousness better than other ones. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that is because the Karma Pala. So, one avidya, but it seems to be different. <laughs> I don't know if it's a... Okay. So nicely approached. See, why I'm asking, so I'm a, a little bit different person. So when I had this question answer sessions, I triggered all brains. Swamiji was there. I didn't know that Swamiji could listen my class. I didn't know that. I was just carried on after the class Swamiji called me. And Swamiji is... Uh, in Tamil, he said, I will have makkil manichai, inna mutta tanama pesara, then I realized, you made wonder man, aparam prata, you made it, he said, I could understand, because of God's grace, every brain has got a pattern, every individual has the pattern, but the Vedantic ideologies, are very common. It's like a different, different diseases, but only one medicine. Now, a doctor should see that once he uh, prescribed a medicine, it has to uh, absorb uh, by, by that system, which is called body, uh, how it responds to the medicine. So, every body is not the same. Somebody, Pitta, Bata Sharira, Pitta Sharira, it's according to Ayurveda. Some of the body is uh, responding. Like that, every mind is a different. An engineer, an engineer always thinks world is nothing but the construction. Even if he wishes to someone, you could say that he is that engineer. The engineer pattern. He will, he will say that you should be strong enough like a tall building. You will bring like. I'm, I'm exaggerating. So you are like a skyscraper. I could see that. If a person is an agriculture person, he would say that uh, you should be like a Vatavriksha. So for a lifelong, you should be like a Vatavriksha. Vatavriksha is banyan tree. Like that. Now this Avidya concept is, uh, is the common medicine. It's a, it's a kind of technical term. There is no existence for Avidya. It's like a darkness. It's a darkness. Now, darkness, uh, uh, my simple question is, does darkness exist or is it a phenomenon due to absence of sun? Absence of light. There's absence no of light. light. Absence of light, Swami. Yeah? Now, but for us, we experience the existence of the darkness. Therefore, we say that darkness exists. Darkness exists. That causes for many vrittis. Vritti causes for karma. In the dark, you have to uh, work more. You have to make yourself like that. This avidya means what? First of all, the first understanding, lack of self-knowledge. Absence lack of knowledge. Yes. Absence of the knowledge of the self. Knowledge. So that understanding is to be there, first of all. Now this avidya, when I say that, is it the same avidya which means? Are is the avidya means what? Ignorance. Ignorance of only one entity. Then it is to be the same. Okay, are you able to understand? Avidya means it's not a separate entity. It's the absence of something. That something is the cause. Until, unless you become enlightened about that thing, the avidya is the same. Now, ignorant, being ignorant of, uh, of cooking, 
So that ignorance related cooking will be removed only when you are given the knowledge of cooking. Like that, this ignorance, ignorance of self, therefore avidya means, but Vedanta, it, it takes in beautiful way, it says, you know, it says, it is your upadhi. That, that which doesn't exist, but that is your upadhi. Upadhi means what? Media. A completely false fellow. All of us. Completely. Abhidya, darkness doesn't have the existence, but that causes for the birth. So how fantastically true. It means every birth, we are going to have different, different, different sharira, different, different experiences, but due to one avidya. Because we cannot count the avidya. It is avidya being related to the self. But that self-ignorance, avidya means what? Self-ignorance gives, uh, it has the capacity of what? Creating the birth. This is Vedantic way of understanding. One thing. The another thing, the avidya is it so powerful? Again I tell you, again I tell you, avidya is a mere word which brings a concept. Which brings the concept, we understand it's a self-ignorance. But we have to see from the perspective of Maya, creation. When I talk about my own creation, why I am manifested due to my karma pala. The entire universe is manifested. It's not because of me. It's not because of my avidya. My avidya causes for my own world. Like there are crores of world, but there must be something common, which is known as the concept of Ishwara. Now, Ishwara is the existent reality, but with Maya. We give this avidya, means individual ignorance. The collective ignorance is known as Maya. Now, this individual ignorance alone is nothing but Maya. Maya means what? It's a collective. Therefore, I always give the example. Then you mistake uh, to see a rope, you convert or you see the snake on rope, rope is your individual mistake. Because somebody, the near person can see the rope as a rope. The mistake is not with anyone. So if there are four people who saw the, who is seeing the rope, you cannot say that four of them will mistake. But when you look at the sky, even if you are 100 people, you look at the sky is color in blue. The sky doesn't have the color. It's a collective. This, don't forget this example. So individual mistake and collective mistake. That mistake is not mistake. We, don't, we never consider mistake. But we should say that it's a collective mistake, man. Like we do so many collective mistakes, but it's not collective mistake. It's like when an ant moves, an ant moves, there must be the noise, means a sound. When there is a, a top, pambaram, top, so when uh, some kid, you know, it gives with from, releases from the rope, it uh, revolves. If you keep your uh, ears, there, there must be the sound. A flight moves sound. But itna bada, this much bigger, earth is revolving and rotating. Where is the sound man? Is there must be sound? Now my question, will there be sound or not? Is there sound or not? There is there sound. There, there is, is sound, sound. yes, yes. Yeah. We cannot hear. Why, 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 why yeah. it, is, it is said that sound doesn't uh, travel in vacuum, Swamiji. It's a space. Then it's a limitation of our own organs. We are not connected with the sound, Swamiji. It's our limitation. We are not connected with the sound. Yes, we are not connected with the sound or 
we are one with the sound we are one with the sound that sound is our energy don't you understand but i understood i asked our doctor doctor this blood circulation is due to the rotation of earth or what then he said no. then dead material doesn't have the person when he died blood doesn't circulate he said and i again asked blood doesn't just circulate but it again gets another form fungus forms is it not this is actually karma action if you stop earth rotating we will die when the karma stops no uh, any even fungus also won't happen everything will abruptly stop abruptly so because everything will disappear about i would say it should keep moving 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 oh this is the nature of avidya avidya means karma because it's moving 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 and we are given a sharira which is uh, what is that get along with the sound if earth stops sound will stop we are sound people we have so louder you know inside we are very louder we always keep talking 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 to ourselves as a noisy people but when it comes through the mouth it is noisy when it comes through the again don't feel bad from anus it is noisy <clears throat> when you sweat when you sweat it is noise it means a sound is our nature avidya i don't know whether about to because by giving too many examples you will be collapsed okay so one thing i would like to say that avidya doesn't have to exist and but that is the base of entire creation now you cannot avoid avidya due to avidya avidya means doesn't have exist and no you have to respect because it's a kind of approach the avidya is the concept don't don't think that this is the true thing no avidya is the word which is given in the process of teaching it is not to condemn anything to not to negate anything first of all you should realize avidya is my buddhi is phenomenal it, it is not there in the outside it is my buddhi is phenomenal it's a condition which is reasons so that i can approach this the secret of srishti i can approach positively i can make myself comfortable in the srishti therefore avidya means don't think that everything is utter darkness outside and everything is paid on that no it's a language from the vedanta so that we can get along with the srishti hari swami ji so that means in other words uh, uh, this avidya is my own creation that's what i would like to say i would like to bring because it is too early to discuss about it i started now i am feeling i have started too early i should have completed this upanishad and bring this topic but still i would say that this is the vedantic approach you cannot fix this avidya anywhere you should not bring in your transact world you cannot say that oh, i was with avidya yesterday i was enjoying you cannot say any is it it's a teaching it's a language like medical has got a language paracetamol means you cannot use it paracetamol is a formula like that avidya is a technical term which is used in only vedanta but it it has got its own uh, connected formulas connected uh, what is a process it's a process avidya is a process don't think that avidya is separately uh, existing so i imagine you know i when i was start avidya i started imagining because my photographic memory is very powerful so i started avidya is this this is avidya i am into it i am into it so the world outside outside the world and the whenever i see the world i peep through avidya i cannot see the world beyond my avidya this is what my uh, 
my what is that understanding because we are in avidya we are in avidya so avidya see avidya should permit you to perceive the world because you cannot see more than your avidya this is how we uh, i i imagined you could you understand that so every world is uh, nothing but the result of avidya karma now avidya limits you are not awakened when you look at someone you are avidya you have to peep through your avidya therefore whatever the understanding comes you are not seeing you are not able to see the original object here it is vasyam by your avidya your perception is covered your understanding is covered your life every activity is covered you are not connected directly to anything you cannot like that this avidya measures this is how i uh, started understanding then slowly i changed and slowly not only me everything is covered with avidya everything is covered with avidya all other people are covered with avidya okay now for example if you remove this avidya i thought you know we remove this avidya means cover we remove this like a balloon which is there we remove this what will remain my question if we remove this that outer layer for example if we remove what will happen will i be able to see uh, properly that uh, world yes Oh, amazing. Because meditation. Yeah, I think that meditation is very important. I will have one more question. Will I see properly, or if I remove this, there, the object also will be perish. Which will happen? All perish. Object will perish. Everything will perish. Everything will perish. Everything will perish. Why it was the form? Now, yeah, now our rupa is dependent on this. Yeah, man. If I break this, if I if I vanish, or uh, if I if I destruct it, no form will be seen. Then, if I destruct it, Vedanta does this job. Vedanta does, but Vedanta makes us to. realize the reality of this avidya and it also teaches every object with name and form is protected by avidya that is what is creation but not disturbing the system of avidya we will understand every nama rupa is depending on avidya but entire this avidya layers are ruled by one big layer means it is called maya but maya exist in the brahman brahman is the substratum like a dreamer is the substratum of the dream is all dreamt world this is the final understanding it will take long time you to reach over there okay is there so this samaji technically we are not existing only <laughs> you know say that technically we are not existing to is there is one only entity that which exist technically we are not existing as the different 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 form like in the dream okay this is the avidya concept okay we we do not to go i am samji i understand that uh, it's the do you have know video games there is a creator who uh, who create a video game which mm -hmm. seems to be real but it's not real yes yes but here is a the life itself is a real video game okay yes but uh, uh, anyways these are all personal way of looking into vedanta but we should not be deviated than this the teaching methodology i always Uh, feel that when we give this kind of examples from external ideas, 
Sometimes they may also cause for wrong understanding. Therefore, we have to come back again to Avidya. Now, the first question which I asked is, again we will come back. But have in your mind what I have given, that ideology, the, uh, the perception, it will support a lot, lot when you transact. Now, uh, due to avidya, we are the, uh, we get a birth. Okay, that avidya causes me to not able to see the Ishvara because avidyas are like a bubbles. They are into the bubbles. Okay. Then I would ask, how many lifestyles is prescribed? Two. There are only two. Why there are only two? So I will take five more minutes. We will conclude the session. You should have asked why there are only there are two. I asked, With knowledge and without knowledge. That's no, why. That's why there are two. Swamiji, Swamiji said, I think you are going to create one more. Hari and Swamiji. There, there are only two margas because there are only action or no action. How many of you are accepting this fact? Why cannot be different action? No, there is action and there is no action. There can be only two things. Swamiji, there is only action. There is something can be. There is only action, action Swamiji. Swamiji, there is only action. Action and maybe a different action. The, <laughs> only, action the only choice we have is a, what is a conscious actions and what is a, a, a unconscious unconscious action in the sense which is causing actions out of your vrittis and what is the action what we do with a very conscious approach. But action is common. It is a continuous but, process. But I am very happy that you are able to answer it. Very beautiful. It is because of karma rahasya. Karma has got only two corners. Yeah. What is that karma? Time wise, space wise limitation. Karma means it is time wise beginning and ending. Space is beginning and ending. Ending. So karma means only pravrti. Pravrti. But that entire karma, it cannot be divided into three or four. So one. Universe is manifestation. Manifestation is one. Unmanifestation is just opposite. Therefore, there are two lifestyles. Okay. There are only two lifestyles. One more lifestyle is not needed. Therefore, this lifestyle is said pravarti. Any variety is only one word. Pravarti. Pravarti means? Pravarti means what? Pravarti means what? Entering into Enter into exploring the karma, entering into the karma. Okay, nivrti means what? Withdrawing, withdrawing from karma. Withdrawing from karma. Okay, right. Now, my question: When you withdraw yourself from karma? Will you able to withdraw yourself completely out of karma? No. No, Swamiji. Oh, then withdrawal means what? Only detaching. Only detaching. Good. Detaching how? From the possessiveness. Our karma should be with karma karma, Swamiji. Withdrawal yes. from the karma pollen, Swamiji. Yes, withdrawal from karma pula. Yes. How can we withdraw? Because, for example, we live, our body exists due to karma. If I withdraw from karma, body will disappear. But one thing I will ask, can we withdraw from the karma pula? We have to submit everything yes. into prasada buddhi, Swamiji. Prasada buddhi, okay. Is it not imaginative? Is it not imaginative state? You no, imagine that you are gone Swami, out of. Uh, no, Swamiji, I have to give up karthrutva buddhi and hotrutva buddhi. Yes. Everything okay. is happening again. Again, you are making yourself. I don't have karthrutva buddhi, but who says it? Bhavana. Swamiji, yeah. Ah, that's what bhavana. I would say that. Bhavana is imagination. 
Swamiji, we should endow ourselves with Vaidika Karya. So mm. that will help us to... Uh, yes. But one thing I would say, yes, just to remember, yes, just to realize, withdrawal is only possible when we realize our real self, which is not at all connected with karma. We are never connected, our original Swarupa is never connected with karma. Mm -hmm. Therefore, by, real, by the realization of the self is the only possibility mm -hmm. to withdraw myself from the karma. Therefore, the supreme knowledge. Because I am not into the karma, my original Swarupa never got into karma, it is a karma. Therefore, for the Nuvarti Marga, the Brahman is to be realized. Wherever there is a Nuvarti Marga, the concept of Brahman is to be brought, the knowledge of Supreme is to be uh, taught, then they can withdraw themselves from this cycle. But body, mind and buddhi, everything will be continuing as the karma product. The same time I can be with me as a karma. Now there is a connection for Nivrti Marga and Brahma Tattva I have told. Unless until, if you are not able to understand or realize the self, you cannot come out of the karma. Coming out of the karma means I am not withdrawing my system out of the system. The body will continue with the karma. My mind also will continue. My, my uh, uh, buddhi also will uh, experiment every time. It will experience the kartrutva buddhi. But the original me is never connected. That original me is to be equated with the collective me. That is what is called Brahmatma Aikya Bhav. Therefore, we have to learn the Atma Jnana. Therefore, this subject matter, the entity is introduced. If I don't have Atma Jnana, I cannot come out of Karma. I cannot. Therefore, the Supreme Knowledge is given. Then why do we want to study about something which cannot be heard, which cannot be seen, which cannot be touched, which cannot be ever bothered? Why? That is me. That is me. It's not someone else sitting somewhere, duck, or in the form of Kailasha, Shiva. No, that is me. That me is told in the form of Brahman. Then I could feel that, that freedom. My God, I am already freed. Relax. Thereafter you can have coffee, tea, chai, but you are totally away. So being withdrawn, thereafter life continues. With more responsibility, but not struggling, not suffering. It's the Vedantic life. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chate Purnasya Purnamada Yapurnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om